with the recent buff to Ethelflaed's relic she has come back into the spotlight as one of the best supportive commanders in rise of kingdoms so today we're going to talk about some ways that you can get her on the battlefield with some commanders that you might already have what's going on guys cheers any day that we get to talk about Ethelflaed is a good day make sure you guys are staying hydrated by the way now a few months ago I made a video talking about Ethelflaed and how you may have more reasons to use her this year than you did last year but when I made that video we had no idea that they were going to buff the existing relics of the season one commanders here in rise of kingdoms we knew that they were going to be implementing buffs for season two commanders which at the time of recording this we know what they are but they're not in the game yet but the upgrades to existing relics was definitely unexpected and both of these changes to the relic system have gotten me thinking about some of the ways that we can start to use these older commanders again and honestly the first commander pairing that I want to talk about is the tried and true original Ethel fled support March this is a March that I think a lot of players have still been using but has definitely decreased in popularity over the past year however I think at this point we may actually want to start considering using it once again and that would be Ethelflaed as a secondary to your Saladin now the reason that this is significant is because not only did Ethelflaed's relic get a buff but Saladin himself also got a buff and again this is one of the OG support marches for Ethelflaed but I feel Feel like players have been using it less often in the past year because we've gotten so many super powerful commanders in rise of kingdoms obviously we've got nevsky we've got joan of arc prime we've got xy with william there, that right there is just two incredibly good open field cavalry marches and i feel like a lot of players have sort of strayed away from saladin a little bit in the open fields but while saladin may not be doing all the fancy things that nevsky and joan of arc prime might be doing the introduction of his relic as well as the buff to the floods relic might put him back on the radar for some players but for those of you who aren't familiar with this March and why people might be using it is it because it's a high damage output March not really it's actually a super supportive open field Cavalry March that's extremely cheap to build for example Saladin at five 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 one essentially has like 90 to 95 percent of his value for only 380 legendary commander sculptures and of course Ethel is a commander that you're going to expertise entirely free to play and the beauty of this March is essentially the slowdown effect that it applies to the target now the thing in the open field with fighting is that March speed matters more than a lot of people really think and Cavalry just by default are the fastest troop type in the game tier 5 infantry have a base March speed of 65 tier 5 archers have a base March speed of 70 and tier 5 Cavalry have a base March speed of 80. just to put that into perspective the March speed of units typically decreases increases as you go from tier one to tier five so if we look here tier one infantry actually have a March speed of 85 lower tier units having a faster March speed was sort of the developers way of balancing these out so weaker players had sort of a little bit of a chance of running away from unfavorable fights obviously in reality that's not typically what happens but if we look back again at the base March speed of the tier five Cavalry this is 80 that means that tier five Cavalry are faster than tier four or tier three infantry and archers now now actually archers have about the same base march speed but that is a significant speed advantage that cavalry have and it makes sense they're literally on a horse okay horses are quite fast if you've ever seen them IRL so returning back to Saladin with Ethelflaed the benefit of Saladin being a cavalry commander is that he's going to be using the fastest units in the game and one of the cool things that you can do is you can slow down the cavalry enemies that way your other marches have a chance of hitting them they can't just run away right that's one of the huge things that cavalry can do is they just run away from fights that they don't want to be in and unless they're slowed down they're going to get away and they're going to be fine so if we take a look at what Saladin is doing here his active skill not only has a 1400 single target damage factor but it reduces the March speed of the target by 30 percent for five seconds a 30 percent March speed reduction is very impressive but the five second duration is really the star of the show here because that's a really long time to slow down and sort of crowd control or snare a single target and this 
this becomes even more impressive if you do actually expertise Saladin because it increases his damage factor but it also bumps that March speed reduction up to 50 percent that means the target is moving half as fast as it would had it not been inflicted by that debuff which means even infantry can catch up to a tier 5 cavalry that's been slowed down this significantly but it doesn't stop there because what separates Saladin from other commanders is that he actually has the support tree and if you look at a lot of the cavalry commanders in rise of kingdoms typically have the skill tree or maybe the attack tree but if we look at the final talent here cage of thorns it says after using an active skill reduces march speed of nearby enemy troops by five percent and this goes all the way up to 20 five percent now one of the things that makes this active skill really good is that it's a five target aoe for three seconds so even though this is not going to apply to the target that you're hitting because Saladin is already providing a more powerful debuff than this talent so the way that debuffs work in rise of kingdoms is that whichever one is the most powerful is going to overwrite the other one so this will not apply to the single target you're hitting but it will apply to four other targets nearby that's a really powerful slowdown effect and this is compounded by the fact that we're going to be pairing Saladin with Ethelflaed now if we look at Ethelflaed's active skill of course she has an 800 damage factor it's five targets with no reduction to the damage factor depending on how many targets that you hit but you also have a 90 percent stat reduction for two seconds it's a small debuff but it is absolutely massive and if we take a look at some of the other skills here Ethelflaed is reducing the counterattack damage she takes by 20 percent but great news guys Saladin also has the same thing on his third skill 20 percent counterattack damage taken reduction so Saladin is known for being a relatively tanky open field cavalry commander because of his defense and this third skill here so now we're bumping this up to a 40 percent counterattack damage taken reduction so if we're being swarmed for example well great news you're taking 40 percent less counterattack damage that's pretty significant now if you're swarmed it's typically a, a death sentence but this is still going to be quite tanky and you're taking 30 percent less skill damage now if we go back to ethel flood here her second skill not only does that but you have a 10 percent chance to inflict a slowdown to the target which reduces cavalry march speed by 50 percent or other units march speed by 30 percent for three seconds so here we see a third way to slow down targets this is unfortunately not aoe it is a single target but a 50 percent march speed reduction for cavalry again is equivalent to the 50 percent march speed you would get from expertising saladin you just get it for free here on ethelflaed but it doesn't stop there because her expertise says that you deal 20 percent increased damage to enemy troops that are affected by slowdown so again we have three ways to slow down the targets with this two commander combination which gives you a lot of opportunity to deal 20 percent increased damage now the reason that we're talking about this march once again is because we got a buff to saladin and a buff to the ethel fled relic if we jump into the museum here okay what we notice is that a two star relic for ethel fled is going to give her 10 percent additional attack for a total of 25 percent troop attack and five percent more march speed for a total of 15 percent march speed and then if we take a look at saladin's relic he's also gaining another 10 percent of attack and 10 percent more cavalry march speed now at first glance this seems like a relatively weak relic and I'll admit I would have much rather seen 10% cavalry health or 10% cavalry defense here but the March speed on Saladin is actually really really good because it's exactly what this supportive army needs in the open field if we take a look at Saladin's second skill once again you'll see that he actually only gets 5% cavalry March speed and if you take a look at a lot of the newer cavalry commanders you're gonna see way more March speed okay 20% March speed on Nevsky here and that's not to mention that you're going to be pairing him with somebody like Joan of our prime who gains 20 percent of cavalry march speed if they're outside of territory or 10 percent no matter what and again I think this is one of the reasons why we started to see Saladin ethel flood a little bit less frequently over the past year because it's actually a little bit harder for him to catch up to some of the other cavalry commanders but now we have a significant buff to the march speed of this army right now instead of five percent cavalry march speed he has 15 percent cavalry march speed and with the buff to ethel flood's relic she also has 15 percent march speed so we're looking at a combined total of 
30 percent march speed for this army which previously only had 15. so it's a doubling of the march speed buff for this army now is that the fastest march in the game no it's not but again the purpose of this army is to just connect with the targets that you want to slow down so that way the rest of your armies can swarm them they can't get away they're going to get absolutely nuked the fact that ethel fled gets another 10 percent of attack and saladin gets another 10 percent of attack for a total of 20 percent more attack on this march than we had previously only increases its effectiveness and the damage that it's going to deal in the open field this is an added bonus this march is not meant to deal massive damage but the bonus attack is just nice it's just an added benefit i think as a free to play player a saladin with ethel fled is probably the best way to use your ethel fled in the open in fields at least right now but I also want to talk about another pairing that I touched on in my previous video which is Sargon okay Sargon primary with an ethel fled secondary is an interesting use for ethel fled and I think we can make the case for this army even more now okay if we take a look at why we would pair Sargon with ethel fled it's pretty straightforward the main thing that you would do with Sargon as a supportive March is apply the stacks of odd debuff to as many targets as you can and as we know you can apply these stacks with aoe and as i explained in my previous video a lot of commanders do not have five target aoe's but ethel fled does and not only that her active skill is a half circle which means the probability that you're going to hit a target with her aoe is much higher than if you were to compare it to somebody like nebu or somebody like mehmed for example so ethel fled is one of the most well-suited commanders for spreading this odd debuff to the targets that you're hitting and just like saladin you can accomplish this with a 5551 sargon now of course sargon at 5550 is technically better at spreading the debuff but if you do that you would have to make him secondary because he can't be max level at 5550 but of course you're not going to put sargon secondary to ethel fled having ethel fled primary is absolutely not what you want to do so for the same commander investment as saladin you could invest in sargon now here's the thing sargon is not not as good at slowing down the targets as Saladin obviously Saladin himself is just significantly faster in the open field he's cavalry he has all the March speed bonuses and he has the support tree but Sargon is going to pack a much more powerful punch he deals way more single target damage now it's over time but hopefully you're going to be staying connected to that target with the slowdowns on Ethel fled plus her new March speed bonus thanks to the relic and you still have some slowdown here on your infantry tree with snare of thorns you have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target march speed by 20 percent for two seconds is it as good as saladin no but it's something and you also have to remember the expertise on ethel fled is going to give her 20 percent more damage anytime that this does proc furthermore you still have 15 percent march speed on sargon so even though infantry are slower than cavalry at least you have now 30 percent of march speed with sargon ethel fled than you did before which was i think 20 five percent when I made my previous video and you're still going to get two percent defense a 500 damage factor and a small shield as well so this combination is really good at spreading the odd debuff and to further illustrate my point I want to compare ethel flood really quick and, and bear with me here okay because this is a stretch this is this is a reach but I do want to compare ethel fled to Guan Yu okay now let me just be very clear Guan Yu is a better commander than ethel fled hands down obviously he's obviously a better commander but the difference between these two commanders might not be as big as you think okay if we look at Guan Yu right now compared to ethel fled he has a 2000 damage factor AoE it only hits three targets and has a three second silence that three second silence is absolutely crucial that's a huge debuff and we love to see it that's the primary reason why Guan you is so powerful in the open field second skill doesn't do anything his third skill gives him 30 percent infantry attack 15 percent march speed and a 1000 uh healing factor when you leave battle so that healing factor is okay it's really good in like runes for example but typically people don't get that much value out of this unless you really know what you're doing and his fourth skill is a really nice additional damage factor okay it's a 50 percent chance but if you hit one target it's another 1k and if you hit two or more targets it's 1400 okay now because this only has a 50 percent chance of occurring we can assume over the duration of a battle that roughly half the time it will happen that essentially makes this 
500 and 700 respectively just for the purposes of doing math and most people don't have the expertise for Guan Yu so if you look at a 5155 Guan Yu versus an expertise ethyl fled what you're going to find is that the similarities are quite interesting okay for example if we look at Guan Yu he gets 30 percent attack and 15 percent March speed well ethyl fled gets 25 percent attack and 15 percent March speed it's pretty close for a commander that's absolutely free to play so you might be thinking okay well Guan Yu's damage factor is just way higher right his is 2000 ethyl fleds is only 800 okay but it's actually not as big of a difference as you might think because as I mentioned before the 800 damage factor is not reduced by 15 percent for each additional target like Guan Yu's is right so for example you're going to deal 2000 damage factor only to one target if you happen to hit two targets it's actually going to be 1700 damage factor to each target that's a total damage factor of 3400 and if you hit three targets it's actually a 1400 damage factor to three different targets for a total of 4200 damage factor but if we take a look at ethel fled for example if you hit five targets with her aoe which again it's a half circle so there's a pretty good probability that if you're in a murder ball you're going to hit five targets she deals 4000 damage factor right 800 times five is 4000 damage factor so we're comparing 4000 damage factor on ethel fled to 4200 damage factor on Guan Yu now of course the silence here is very powerful but remember Ethel Flat has a really powerful debuff as well and it's for less time but it's still really really good now we do have to take into account the fourth seal of Guan Yu which essentially immediately bumps up his uh average damage factor by like 600 points so we're comparing 4,800 damage factor to the 4,000 damage factor on ethyl flood again we're simplifying this dramatically just to give you guys sort of a point by point breakdown so yes Guan Yu does deal about 800 damage factor on average more than ethyl flood assuming that both commanders are hitting all of their targets if you only hit two targets with Guan Yu you're still dealing 4,000 damage factor whereas ethyl flood is only dealing 1600 okay so this we're talking about best case scenarios here okay but in the best case scenario Guan Yu's damage factor is only about 800 higher than ethyl flood which is a lot but it's less than you probably thought and we also have to consider that ethyl fled is going to be dealing 20 percent increased damage to enemies that are slowed down plus she has 20 percent less counter attack damage taken and guan yu's effectiveness pretty much ends there right he just deals a damage factor and gives you an attack and march speed buff that's pretty much it so and so yes guan yu outshines a little bit in the damage department but again you have a little bit more tankiness in ethyl fled plus the slowdown and you get 20 percent bonus damage anytime that they're slow so if we're looking at a world where you have a Guan Yu primary with Sargon secondary versus a Sargon primary Ethel Fled secondary well again the buffs to infantry are going to be very similar right Ethel Fled gives you 25 percent attack and 15 percent March speed whereas Guan Yu is 30 and 15 respectively and the AoE on Ethel Fled isn't that much worse than Guan Yu plus her debuff is still good and she gives you the tankiness and bonus damage to slow targets so I think a Sargon Ethel Fled is probably almost as good as a Guan Yu Sargon right and knowing that actually frees up your Guan Yu prior to this relic update if you were doing something like Guan Yu primary with Sargon secondary and then Scipio primary with I don't know Mehmed or Tarek or even Alexander the Great or something you might actually want to reconsider that army configuration right because at this point you could probably do Sargon primary with Ethel fled secondary get a similar result to the same as Guan Yu with Sargon and now you could just do Guan with CPO just like you always wanted to do and have not as much downside as you might think again this is theoretical and sort of napkin math but the relic on Ethel fled is surprisingly good and I think that there's a lot of ways that you can play around with using her as a supportive commander in the open field now if you want even more ways to use Ethel fled I do talk about Joan of Arc Prime in my previous Ethel fled video so make sure you go ahead and check that out but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below what do you guys think about this buff to Ethel Flood's relic do you think that more people are going to be using her now as a supportive commander than they were before especially behind somebody like Saladin who I think is definitely the star of the show despite the fact that we did talk a little bit about Sargon while you're down there make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really does help out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing and clicking the bell we're so close to 50,000 subscribers and you don't want to miss the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.